of rebuttal. Main, paranoia, shelflessness, and what this motion is really about. Then I'll go to my part of the case, meaning what exactly trust means by applying this motion, and how we'll actually gain a better society overall, and how there is anyway a trend towards having a peaceful society, towards having a helping each other society, towards having a perfect society in the world today. So, paranoia. But that has one single problem. People are mad and they believe that everything can hurt them, that the anti-vaccines practically heal them and will make them, I don't know, impotent in the best case scenario. But that's why we're sending scientists that can determine what is right and what is wrong without being paranoid and with actual evidence, scientific evidence, not delusional paranoia. Right, so that was easy. Now, about implementing, we believe that in the model there might be a couple of loopholes and so on and so forth, but we believe that our core, we are right. They blame us because some might opt out and might go out. And we believe first that if someone goes out, then it means that you will not benefit from any research that will come afterwards. Moreover, if it won't benefit from that, it won't benefit also from the fact that it, they won't have a vote. And they won't be able to technically not backstab, but stop other kind of researches that can potentially be harm for them. Also, even if those weren't true, then opting out is your own choice and we can try to make pressure on you in order for you to not opt out because we have to work as a community and not as individual countries. Yes, there might be exceptions, but just because there is one exception in the whole map amount doesn't mean that we have to stop this motion at its core, no. Right. <laughs> Selflessness. Now, this is the problem here. They want profit, they want advantage over the other, they want all of those stuff. But the main problem is that those things are not, you know, researches that don't hurt anyone and hurt only me and so on and so forth. We talk here about major researches, researches such as nukes underground, nukes in the atmosphere, seismic powers that are made by countries that affect other countries as well, not only the, the country itself. If it wouldn't harm anyone, then it wouldn't have applied on the motion. The respective examples do not apply on this particular motion. We talk about things that can be potentially dangerous towards the whole world. And those things, as Bada wasted practically 10, min 10 minutes in explaining, uh, 3 minutes in explaining, were practically useless. But in the point of selfishness, we have to realize that they want profit and they want advantage over anything. Therefore, they have to do two major things. Firstly, prove that their research is important, therefore getting the whole global approval Therefore, then improving this kind of research in order to sell afterwards, which we find that really valid because they can research and not only they can research that but also have the global approval, so it's pretty good. But what we want to go deeper in is the fact that the whole world would actually contribute to it. Because when you give something with a potential danger to the whole world, the whole world will have to ensure the fact that the respective research is efficient and will not go kaboom and kill everyone in a second tail. Uh, now, the problem is that those things can be easily done, but they cannot be done in the current status quo that they try to protect. And we are trying to improve those things at their core. Go. Not even when we have quantifiable evidence that Brazil is destroying the world, we did not interfere in the deforestation. Countries are selfish. Bad. That's the point. It was bad that we didn't interfere. It is bad that we're not interfering. It is time to interfere. How about that? Yes, that's why we are taking the world technically a world approach in order to determine those stuff because we are sick of people like Brazil, like North Korea, like India and so on and so forth and we need to have leverage over them. Thank you, Dio. Right. <laughs> About research. What research and what types of research? Now, if there would be vaccines that would practically not harm anyone and we know that they are good, those are not in the motion. If there would be things that would destroy only my country and would not harm anything, although those things do not exist, even if the super collider in Genova explodes, what happens is that it creates a black hole, which potentially, because we don't know yet, can swallow the whole world. Well, yes, those are potentials and those are different things, but, uh, and those are probabilities, but those can happen. And we find, that a major, we find that a major problem. The fact is that everything that is potentially dangerous has to happen 
to be leveraged upon. Someone has to have a world in what potentially danger is. We have to stop things such as nukes inside the, inside the water. We have to stop seismic powdering. We have to stop all those things that can practically destroy us all and can practically hurt us all. Uh, yeah, right. Now, what we would try to prove you is that this practically solves anything. The fact that you are aware of something, as Victor said, the fact that you are aware that the research is going on and it's improving and so on and so forth, and it exists in the main place, it won't be a surprise in the moment that it will exist, and it won't give an unfair, unchecked advantages, advantages to other countries. And this is where we have to go even, uh, even deeper in the, anal in the analysis. Because we have to analyze the fact that anyway there are differences between states, but what we have to do is to reduce those differences as much as possible. So by allowing more countries to know and be aware about the respective research, it means that because they are sending scientists, those scientists are able to copy, to improve, to change, to practically do things in order for the respective research to fit on them too. Not only on USA and China and Russia that would put immense prices on them in order to sell them afterwards. We have to have a global approach about anything. And this is where we get to globalization. Because obviously, if there is a research, potentially dangerous, but with huge benefits, it's obvious that the whole world would agree. And we say, even if the whole world doesn't agree, and there is one, two states, then we can make the pressure because we can show them the benefits that would come afterwards. Yes, maybe we will, they will be hurt economically, maybe they won't like it in the first place, but we believe that if approximately 200 countries prove you that you're drunk, you are drunk and you have to go home. That's the main point. And now we have to go to the last point about trust. That's what we miss today. Countries backstab other countries on their expense without, without no kind of, I don't know, with, of pity towards them. They don't care about anything. But those are remotely cases. There are countries that do that and, major, and, and actually to the biggest players. What we can actually see on the global scale when you are taking out individuality and so on and so forth, that there is a trend. There is a trend towards helping smaller countries, such as countries in Africa. There is a trend towards helping the population. There is a trend towards actually having better relations economically and polit politically with everyone. It means that you reach to the point where you are actually perpetuating the fact that we need to have this trend continuous because it's easier to have peace rather than war. It's easier to have c bonds between us rather than hate to, between countries. It's easier to have all of those, uh, all of those stuff for the, whole, for the whole world. And what we actually want to do is to improve this even more. Each and every single country to trust the, the other country that the research they are doing will not hurt them without them being aware of it. That will not just something explode randomly and they will be affected and they will be like, wait, I didn't know about that, what am I doing now? We have to have a level of awareness and this awareness brings trust. And trust generally brings benefits because that's the moment when actually a relationship and more diplomacy works and is functional. When the moment when states at their core have technically trust in each other. And we believe, ladies and gentlemen, that in the moment when mistrust happens, is the moment when things such as Brazil, such as North Korea appear. And we have to stop this as much as possible. For all of this, we beg you to seek for world approval every time.